good evening. I'm Melissa Idris. Welcome to Consider This. This is the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider what you know of the news of the day. To mark the one-year milestone of Anwar Ibrahim's administration, today on the show we'll delve deeper into the inner workings and the challenges faced behind the scenes. Now, what beyond the public-facing narratives, what really happens within the corridors of power? What challenges are encountered and what compromises are made? And just how much of governance remains unseen operating within the intricate machinery of politics. So joining us on the show to give us an insider's perspective on the highs and the lows of the past year, I have with me on the show Datuk Sri Shamsul Iskandar Muhammad Akim, who is the Senior Political Secretary to the P Prime Minister. Welcome to the show, Dr. Sri. It's good of you to join me. Thank I you. want to um, maybe begin our conversation today with learning a little bit more about this role. So it, correct me if I'm wrong, but... Um, the, the, the role of senior political uh, secretary to the Prime Minister has never formally existed prior to this administration. So maybe you can begin with that, the, the responsibilities and the scope of this role um, and what that entails. Well, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you, uh, Awani, for giving me the opportunity. Uh, well, uh, I must say that um, the position of political secretary is there in the federal constitution. Mm -hmm. So it is supposed uh, that clearly established um, in the Malaysian constitution. With respect on the position of senior political secretary, you are right. Uh, in fact, when um, Prime Minister Tatusiano first called me and said uh, he, um, he, he wanted to, me to be there to help him as a senior political secretary, so in fact, I was joking with him, is there such a position? <laughs> Um, but when we check with the um, Chief Secretary, uh, uh, KSN, mm. yeah, uh, it was there. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, previously it was, not, it was not that established in that sense. Uh, but the, the, main, the important role of the Senior Political Secretary, other than being part of the Prime Minister's uh, outfit, yeah, uh, I also chaired the meeting of all political secretaries, uh, of all the ministers. Uh, we organize the meeting uh, uh, every week mm. or every fortnight. And in fact, we discuss uh, a lot of issues pertaining to the ministries and, of course, the government. Uh, I must say that it is not a sugarcoat uh, meeting. Uh, we are very blunt in that sense. Yeah. Uh, we say things which uh, uh, maybe some of the political secretaries from other ministries, they don't like to hear. Right. But that's the forum mm. that we can discuss openly to navigate things. Okay. And uh, in other way, to ensure that the path, the political path of the government and of course the Prime Minister uh, will be in the, in, in the, in the steady, in steady so, path. So that forum is where it, it all comes out, right? So you get the kind of clear assessment of the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. It comes out there. Yes. Uh, just, just so that I understand, so it, it, what? how does your role um, affect or does it affect governance and policy? Does it in any way have a part to play with the governance of the country and the policy-making side of, of um, governing? Yeah, I was... Uh, share with my colleague in, in polit uh, other political secretaries. Of course, when we, when we are in the administration, I think that there's, there's quite clear demarcation. Yeah? Uh, we have the civil servant mm -hmm. uh, that basically uh, run and facilitate the, ministry, the, 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 the minister and, the, and also the ministries with uh, such regulations, uh, uh, whatever policies, but the other part of it, we have non-written rules, yeah. non-written laws, you see. And this is also important because we need to communicate to the public. Mm. Yeah. Whatever policies, how beauty it is, you need to communicate effectively to the public. And of course, being a politician, minister being a politician, need a political um, uh, programs mm. to the public to explain whatever policies they have uh, already put in place. So we respect on this, the clear the effective role of the political secretaries is to uh, navigate and ensure the political programs to the people, uh, to the rakyat, uh, in fact, to the constituents of 
the ministers become minister, minister is very busy with all the day-to-day -day job as minister. So we need to facilitate that. Okay. So this is two, uh, uh, for me, important collaboration um, uh, with the civil servants. So when we review one year of the uh, 10th Prime Minister of PMX, one year of the yeah. Unity Government, do we also have to review your performance? What, what will be your KPIs in this role? Yeah, the, uh, I think uh, we understand that uh, we also need to, to speed up things, you see, because uh, when you talk about political stability, for example, yeah, we need that. Mm. And I think that's uh, an important uh, uh, achievement that to, we have To get achieved. things yeah. done, right? You yeah. need stability to get yes, things done. Yes, because uh, after a year, now people talk about political stability mm. compared to previous government. Yeah? And of course, the public, you know, also the public, but the other fraternities, you know, like those in the economic sector, and of course, the, uh, those who want to invest, the investor, they want to ensure that this country, Malaysia, is politically stable. Mm. Yeah. And this is so important. That's why I think all the political secretaries, they are working hard on the ground uh, to ensure that the political um, signs yeah, reflect yeah. the political stability in the country. I, I, I think we should not underestimate or understate the importance of political stability um, in governing a country, especially after yep. you know, the past five years yes. of uncertainty and yes. instability. Right? That, we're not going to understate that. But I do want to ask you, beyond surviving one year in, uh, in office and providing that stability, what else would you consider the most significant accomplishments of this unity government under Anwar Ibrahim's um, leadership? Well, I think uh, we must um, take into account seriously what has been said by the Prime Minister in the previous uh, People's Justice Party Congress, mm -hmm. yeah, where he basically uh, reminded us that based on the past experience in Europe, for example, when political parties or coalition political parties talk about reform, there are a lot of failures in Europe. Yeah? In fact, he mentioned an uh, important leader, which I, I really follow his writing, Baslav Havel. Yeah? Uh, the Paradise Lost, yes, which explains um, how difficult it is, you know, to do reform when you gain when you get the power, uh, in the situation where the ecosystem doesn't permit that. Mm. See? So we need to balance up. Uh, we need to prioritize. So if you, if people can follow the mapping of the prime minister since the first day uh, on the twenty first of November. He, he, he made it very clear. Yeah. First, uh, he wants to show that he has the legitimate support. Yeah. I still remember 19, um, 19 of December, yeah. he went to the parliament and with the intention, with a clear objective to get the support from the members of parliament. Uh, the motion yeah, of support of him as, as a prime minister. On 19 January, he came, came up with the Malaysia Madani. Mm. Let's together build Malaysia towards one focus. Yeah. And then the programs that uh, set after that is clearly towards achieving political stability. As we are discussing today, I mean, I just came back from the parliament. We have another one from opposition MP that pledged support to the prime minister. So we already got five now members of parliament from the opposition side who I think maybe out of frustration with the opposition, came uh, and support, pledged support to Prime Minister. So I think uh, political stability done. Okay. But along the, along the process, even, if, even before we reach one year, we have the, uh, the clear focus of the Prime Minister on the uh, economy. We, he uh, presented Economy Madani, a midterm review of the, of the government's plan, and, and of course, a uh, few other uh, policies, which for me encapsulates yeah, the importance of economy. Mm. So I think the period after this, the focus of the government after this is the economy. And m one must also remember how he uh, work uh, day and night at, at, at his age. You know, sometimes I ask him where you get all this energy. You know? At his age, he went as many countries as he can to promote Malaysia and to get 
investors, foreign investors to come and invest in this country. Okay. I'll come back to some things you brought up, but I want to ask you, you've, you've pointed out what you consider are the accomplishments. What do you consider the challenges, the, the uh, setbacks or the missed opportunities? Well, the, the challenges, I would say, um, um, we, are, uh, we are living now in, in, in a very uh, critical period of time where uh, the sky is open. Yeah? I mean, the media now is not mainly on conventional media. People are going for the new media. Mm. And, 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 and there is no limit. Mm -hmm. all right? Everything we, gets put out there, yeah, right? We talk about media freedom. Mm -hmm. But I believe, as someone who has legal training, freedom must come with responsibility. The unique strength of this country is that because we are based on multiracial. We have Malay, Chinese, Indian, and of course, Sabah and Sarawak. So we need to have or inculcate good values to ensure that there is a peaceful uh, among the community in this country. Okay. Um, that, that is true, or, or Sam, if I yeah, may. Um, yeah. Are you, when you say, when you talk about media and the openness of how information is transmitted, are you referring to the fact that there can be all kinds of criticisms levied at the government now? Is that, is that considered the biggest challenge of the this? The criticism is fine. In fact, uh, I think as the government, you need uh, groups of opposition, you need uh, civil society organization to put up a constructive criticism. That's fine because that's how democracy works mm. in, in, in other democratic countries. Yeah? But my worry is that the, there are irresponsible persons outside who invoke on the misinformation and disinformation. Okay. Can, can I follow up on that? Public perception of um, this government. So we had the Merdeka Center yes. re survey results that was released recently, a growing proportion of Malaysians dissatisfied with the Prime Minister yeah. and also the Madani government. Um, and I think economic concerns were cited as the main reason. How is the Prime Minister and the government responding to this survey? Are you taking this um, as one of your kind of data points as to the mood and sentiment of the country? Yeah, I mean, the, like, like I said earlier, uh, we have a prime minister who is very democratic. Yeah. People can level criticism against him. Uh, well, you can see a lot of criticisms. Uh, sometimes it's too much for me. Uh, I would say uh, to the extent that uh, ridicule him. Yeah. Do, uh, do you get offended if you hear people ridiculing him? Well, um, I'm okay because maybe I'm, I'm, I'm quite used with that in opposition those days. Yeah. Uh, well, there are certain people who uh, feel offended, and now there, there is new word, new istila, koya, is it? <laughs> uh, but I think uh, we must be very objective. As someone who's seasoned in politics, of course, I, I try to take the criticism that valid, mm -hmm. legitimate, and res respect on the medical center that reflects the openness of the prime minister. Mm -hmm. right? uh, uh, when you do a survey, it's about people's uh, public perception. And publics get message from various sources of information, mm. not only the conventional media, but also the new media. Mm. Uh, uh, and again, it, it somehow or other develops a certain perception to the government. But what is the most important thing is to try to get what are clearly their dissatisfaction okay. on point. Yeah? Okay. If they think that our economy is not doing good, okay, then we focus on the economy. Mm. We, we, we look into that program, we look into the policies. Uh, if they criticize us uh, with respect to uh, well, uh, social uh, yeah. mobility. What, what's your read, Sam, of what is the biggest feedback or criticism to this government? Well, of course, clearly economy. Okay. Yeah. And people, what people, will you do about that? Yeah, people, people need to, uh, uh, to... People expect government to do more with respect to the economy. Well, granted, like I said to you earlier, uh, PMX strategy is very clear. Political stability first, okay. right? Along the way, yes, you focus a bit, uh, or put attention a bit on economy, investment, etc. But after this, I think with a clear Belanjawan Madani 2024, 
we can see various programs for the people and inshallah i think uh, we'll certainly focus uh, on on economy in the next uh, second year of his administration okay, so, so in the next phase we'll get more uh, we're going to take a quick break here on consider this we will be back with more stay tuned <music> Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris. I'm speaking today to Datuk Sri Shamsul Iskandar Mama Akin, who is the Senior Political Secretary to the Prime Minister. We're talking, he's giving us an insider's perspective of what has happened in the past year. I want to come back to something you said about um, it's difficult to have or to, to implement reforms in an ecosystem that doesn't always allow for it. What would you say to the people who are impatient with what they consider a slow pace of reform and also a mentality of business as usual. So, so they've given this government a year, but they're expecting so much more. What would you say to those people? Well, I would like to, to um, take the opportunity to explain, for example, one of the um, criticism level against Prime Minister in the Parliament recently on the Manifesto of Harapan. With respect on the Constituents Development Fund, CDF. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think today, uh, I think recently, Bersi came up with a statement on CDF. Yeah. And I was there in the Manifesto, Harapan Manifesto. Yes, okay. Thank you very much for raising that. But I think we also need to remember that this is not purely a Harapan government. Yeah. We don't get enough members of parliament enough support of MPs mm. to form our own government. It's a coalition government. You need to navigate. In fact, Kaadilan, People's Justice Party, where I'm a member of it, I mean, we, we, we admit that we are also, uh, we also have only 30 MPs. It's a minority party. Mm. But we navigate, we discuss, we negotiate, and then we have agreed on something. Uh, and we call it Membangun Malaysia Madani. This Madani is a clear framework towards, inshallah, five years or maybe another five more years. And I would say this, yeah. we are working towards the reform. We must know our priorities. Um, because we understand the political decision by the people. We went to the election. People give us mandate, not purely majority mandate. And as the leaders of political parties, we need to okay. have a wisdom to discuss among our partners. And more important is that we are working towards that direction. In fact, I would say to the, even our civil society leaders and, of course, other people uh, with, within this fraternity, let's have patience. Let's have a, a, a decorum to understand what Prime Minister's plan, right? We, we, Prime Minister waits, I mean, my, uh, my boss waited for 25 years to be the Prime Minister. And he has gone through from prisoner to the Prime Minister. And now and he finally is Prime Minister, yes. but not on his own terms. He's Prime yeah. Minister of a coalition government right. where po political realities will prevail. That's right. How has it been working with former political opponents? And what concessions have you had to make, um, given that you need to sit at the same table yeah. And work things out. You, you are asking me a, a, a question which really, which have, which I have interest. You know, I fought against the uh, deputy prime minister that took his head in in, in <laughs> When you stood, you stood against him. <laughs> right. That's right. And but you lost in a very narrow margin. Yeah, three four eight. That's okay. the number. But I think, uh, 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 like, like I mentioned earlier in in in, in the early part, that uh, this is the clear strategy of PMX to ensure that the coalition partners understands where the country wants to go. Yeah? Because if you see from, from 19 December, where you get the legitimate uh, support from the members of parliament in the Dewan Raya in the parliament, a month after that, he came up with a clear direction. In a way, okay guys, we are going, here, we're going, we're going here. We are going to have a Malaysia Madani, mm. which put nilai values as paramount to ensure that the governance is being followed, no corruption, 
contracts all tender uh, to ensure that whatever issues as reported in the audit, national audit report, won't happen again. So that's a, a paramount okay. uh, principles. Right. That, I think, with that principles, with the clear programs, we see the support from the majority MPs and the coalition partners. One of the things that I think is different this time around this administration compared to the 2018 um, Pakatan Harapan administration is that all the internal bickering is not yeah. made public. So mm. back then it was quite public, yeah. the, the infighting. But here, I don't know whether there is infighting, but if, it there, there is, if there is, it's well hidden. At those meetings where you chair with all the other political secretaries, how, how is the cooperation? What's ugly there? Is everyone working well together? I mean, surely you must have baggage and disagreements and different ideolo um, ideologies. How do you thrash it out? How do you work and make compromises that doesn't um, put you away or derail you from your own principles? Well, I think the important here is to develop trust among the partners. Can you trust your coalition partners? Yes, of partners? course, because we are working towards one direction. We have a clear agenda. Well, I don't think my partners in other parties, they like corruption. They see the ugly part of corruption. We have gone through that. We don't want to repeat it again. All right? And when you say about the internal bickering, I don't think you see there exists anymore. No internal bickering in yes, this unity because, government? Yeah, because, uh, 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 of course, there are issues. Mm. But we have the forum to discuss. They have cabinet every every week and the Prime Minister chair the meeting of all the coalition partners every two months once or every three months. You know? How secure is the Prime Minister in standing his ground against his coalition partners, against his AMNO coalition partners? Well, you can see for example in the case of uh, acquittal of Zahid on the NAA, yeah? he used the parliament to explain that the government has no influence into the judiciary. That's purely judicial system. So I think um, on, on, certain, on matters that are principle, the Prime Minister will come forward and defend the coalition partners. Right? And, and the same goes to other partners. That's how you can see the level of tolerance, the level of trust is growing um, by the day. And, and Alhamdulillah, I thank God that after a year, like you mentioned correctly, we don't hear anything talk about bad things, you see. Yeah. Not hearing it doesn't mean it's not there. So that was, that was my, my question. I also wanted to get your honest assessment of the opposition as a one-year review. Because yeah. you may be in government for a year, but the opposition has also been the opposition for one year. Have they provided a constructive check and balance in this past year? What could they do better? Yeah, I think, I think the, the opposition uh, is in this array. Yeah. I mean, last uh, one of the component Congress, you know, there's one president say that it's time for me to resign, and the next day he said, no, I come back. So I think how the problematic they are. That's, that's one point. Another point is that the propagation of extremism, right? The Prime Minister always used the term menunggang agama, you know, used religion for their political sake. And this is for me, uh, the recipe for destruction of this country. What would the Prime Minister do to counter that then, if it's a concern of his? Yeah, of course, we need to enhance the programs and education and um, well discuss with Jakim and of course the Council of Rulers with respect to is Islam and the empowerment of Islamic activities to educate the public. So we need everyone on board on this. I, I recall when I was in the position, even when Prime Minister was then leader of opposition, we don't argue our case towards the government along that line. Because we know this is recipe for destruction of this multiracial country. We need to preserve yeah. this country to be multiracial, to respect one another, regardless of religion and race. So I think this is an important um, message, I would say, to the rest of the Malaysians. Politic, yes. Criticism against Prime Minister, you are allowed to, to do constructive criticism to build this nation back, to bring this nation back to the track as a tiger of Asia. 
Thank you so much for being on the show with me, Welcome. Jay. I appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome. That's all we have for you on this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris, signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching and good night. Thank you.